What's up guys, this is Cher talking, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I bring you news for months in Saga Universe and we just got the announcement of two new banners. Well, the first one, Romancing Festival, Mune. This one has Mune as a teacher that is causing C as a janitor, I guess, and Professor Wagner, I guess. I don't know. Uh, we already have the information about this banner, and I'll be talking about that in a few. Then the second banner is about Bertrand, Bokon, and Valdor. This is more damage-oriented, to be honest. The other one is a little more support-oriented. But now, this banner released on April of this year on GP. It's a time travel banner. And I do believe they did this because they are planning something. Yes, just like what they did with Maria being released early. I think they, they are planning to do something. And releasing beauty here now makes more sense because we will get something that is more desirable. Maybe Razan is actually coming soon. And, well, uh, Razan is a very good character that people will want to pull for. And Bune may be um, less interesting. Now, uh, they also announced this new event called Love and Peace in Sagatopia. That's related to the banners. And has 20 more HP cap, we also be able to get 3,000 jewels on the shop. We're getting lots of jewels because of the double banners, right? So, uh, I'll be going to Reddit. Hands for a tree made a post already showcasing the differences between Global and JP. Uh, we have the first video here from Beauty's banner. So, Beauty got an increase in her intelligence. It's a big increase because she was not made as a damage dealer, but they just allowed her to do more damage. Increased her will as well because she's a type of support that cannot be inflicted with ailments. She wants to buff and stay there without any ailment. Now, her endurance is kind of bad and she has very high love because she's also a healer. For passes, we have a 15% attack boost to male alliance in the party that lasts for only one turn and will not work for female units. Then a 50% chance to recover HP of all surviving allies other than herself. That will be uh, close to 300 heal. And she also recovers 2 BP. By doing any recovery action, she applies a defense up that decreases damage taken by 10% for the whole fight and will buff endurance, will and charisma of that specific target by 15%. By the turn begins as well, she buffs her own love by 25% and will grant herself a defense boost that decreases damage taken by 30%. You should treat this as her damage reduction passive. And she buffs love even further every turn, reaching very high values and her very small healings will go between 300 to 350, I believe. That's right. Moving on for spells, the first one, she has a recovery spell with three usages. Then before healing, she will buff her own love by uh, up to 40% on max level. You have to manually level this up. And then she will grant evade to the same target. Because she buffs love so much, I believe that she will heal someone from 0 to max with ease. And, well, evasion is nice. It's much like Global Axe Rouge heal, but in his case, damage block. By evasion, you can even evade ailments, for example. But it's just one time, and it will disappear. And... Uh, now talking about heals, if you have her other style that has access to an AoE heal, that one uses 10 BP, but also 2 LP, so she can use it two times, and, well, when you cast that spell, she will also apply defense up to the party, decreasing damage taken by 10%. Two times, defense up medium is very similar to Scrum Guard. And when she is healing our targets, she is buffing them as well. When you are uh, buffing just a single target, you are buffing a single character and healing. It's interesting because you are always getting something extra. But that's her way to give something similar to Scrum Guard and keep the party alive. Because either way, she will just be using skill number two. That is support and buffs endurance, will and charisma of all surviving allies. By 25% on max level, but that starts with 15, you have to manually level up as well. And she has an extra effect, healing them all by very small effect. That I said should be close to 300 or 350, depending on how many love buffs she stacked. This is very similar to what we got in the past with Global X Diana, but Global X Diana didn't buff Charisma. Instead, she would just cleanse the party from status elements. So, 5 VP is much better. Diana was 8. So you can keep spamming this. Remember that she has 5 EP per turn. 
So, in a fight, you open by just buffing this status and giving that extra very small healing. Then you can just use this spell that can be used three times per battle if just one character got big damage. And you will apply the defense up, give that evasion, and at least buff endurance will encourage them for that specific target. The problem is that when you buff just one character, it means that everyone else didn't get buffed. So, sometimes building cannot be your main buffer or cannot be the only one at least, you have a need of a secondary one just to keep the party protected in those turns. Also, uh, her AoE heal, it's 10 BP, so you cannot use it two times, one after another, because some people will just prefer to apply defense up as soon as the fight starts, right? Even if you do not need the heal, if you already have people like Mirza or Polka to heal in other turns. So, you, you need some more turns in order to build up some BP, especially if you have some BP batteries, or you have to skip at least one turn of buffing. And if you do, your party is not fully protected. So it's an interesting uh, kit that can keep buffing defensive status, but she does not buff offensive. Remember that, well, uh, Matrock buffs STR, Endurance, Intelligence, and Agility in Pion of Victory. That means that she builds characters for more damage while also buffing endurance. She has PN of Peace that buffs Dexterity, Will, Love, and Charisma. That will allow you to protect from ailments, magical attacks, and then do more damage with Dexterity-based units. This design is similar for Melissa and Muse, but they just buff different status. But all of them buff one offensive status and defensive status as well. But Beauty, no. She just buffs defensive status and will not increase your party damage. Besides male units, and 15% is not even that important. So, there is value here, because you are protecting versus endurance and will. And some boss fights will try to attack you with both physical and magical, like the latest boss, Saruin. But, I believe that you are losing lots of potential as well by not having uh, offensive buff with your buffer. And the extra very small healing may be overkill, if you are bringing people like... Mirza, or Chef Polka, or Katarina, or even Muse performing as a healer if you have BP batteries in the team. So there's Valui, but there is also a lot of competition on the field because we got so many buffers recently. And some of them, like Muse and Maria, even have Scrum Guard, a much easier way to protect the party instead of having to cast AoE heal from inheritance. Not everyone will have that inheritance. Then the third spell is Fast. AoE with C power that buffs agility by up to 30% on max level. It's very hard to use because we don't evade anymore, very hard challenges, so it's just there. In the end, I believe this beauty deserves a triple S grade. I don't know if she deserves an OP grade by uh, her buff being a little different and being reliant on inheritance options. But she's good if you skip it, some of the buffers I mentioned, it. she can help you out. But Remember that Razan is probably coming, I think, in the, the next month, and he buffs the party when attacking and can apply a defense uh, boost of 25%. So he can take Buna's spot in the team and even heals as well. So if you want to wait, he will serve you well. The next one is Kazinsi, and he's a sword user with Shadow Spells. They buffed his intelligence, and that's it. All the other status I kinda average, nothing here stands out, but he just has enough dexterity, agility, and STR to inherit skills if you want. Uh, first passive, when he attacks, he buffs all of his status by 15%. He also recovers 1 BP. This is the only global change. Then he also debuffs Will by 5% when attacking and recovers 2 BP as well. So he actually recovers 6, right? And then he has high protect tension. That's a very simple design. Skill number 1 is a Deep Power Shadow and Cold spell that will recover HP by around 1000. That's right, Absorb Plus. The second one is Eutanize Plus. This is a Amplify for a node skill that you can find on Wicked Witch or uh, it's just 8 PP that will debuff enemies' intelligence by 30% while buffing your own by up to 40% on max level. Eutanize is actually very useful, and now that we have 6 PP per turn, it means that you can actually go back to it sometimes faster. But it's not spammable in Kazinsi because he doesn't have 8 PP every turn. 
And sometimes debuffing more than 15% is needed. I remember some Global X challenges where we needed to debuff more than 15%. In a turn, in a boss, we always use the five weaknesses by the end. But sometimes you need to do it in specific turns, every three turns before a nuke or something. So it's good, but there are also alternatives. Remember that Psycho Boom from Global X Rock Bouquet can also be used to debuff 30% intelligence. If you have the latest rock, especially if you're bringing her on Subtle in Squad, she's gonna recover lots of BP as well. Besides, if you have Medea, she already covers intelligence debuffs that you may need. Then the third one is a support 10 BP skill that will grant one damage block by no turn limit. So if a boss chooses to use single target attacks, people that got this damage block will stay with it for the amount of turns it needs, but once they get hit once, it will disappear. It will also grant this passive called Vivify 2, that will be permanent in battle, and by the end of a turn, it, they will have 25% chance to recover 2 BP. Averagely speaking, you are getting 1 BP every 2 turns. Is this good enough? No, it's handling RNG on a very strange way. And since this cousin is more about having access to high intelligence debuffs and constant will be buffing, he's more of a specialist with limited utility outside of specific boss fights. I think he is good enough for what he wants to do, but it's just that we don't need him too much. And we just got Darius that has a better uh, damage block skill, that he can actually block all damage by two turns, no matter the number of hits. That means that in the end, uh, Kazinsi is much less impactful. He will receive a plain SS crate in our tier list. And is also very easy to skip. Next one is Vagnus. He uses spears and heat spells. It needs a combination of both STR, intelligence, dexterity, and agility because he's hybrid. And he does have good will at least to be protected versus ailments. Then on a battle begins, he will grant this uh, passive called Hari Kitty Healing that will allow everyone to heal the party when they attack on overdrive. They will be healing for very small heals. That will be around 200 to 250, depending on their love and charisma status. Well, charisma status of the targets and the love status of the attacker. So that's funny, right? Because they will need to reach overdrive to heal a little further. And I said about Beauty, this was designed for a time where JP still didn't have very reliable healers. By the end of a turn, he will also fill up the OD gosh of one random ally. This is interesting, right? Because, well, someone else will always have enough to just give that very small healing on the next turn. But this also brings some inconsistency in battles. Like, uh, sometimes you will be using one character on overdrive, the other you will be using two or three characters on overdrive. Usually not full. You know, because you want to take advantage of this. If you wait too much, you're not taking advantage of that. Uh, overdrive charge, right? And the interesting fact is that when everyone is on overdrive, it's five very small healings. That is more than what you get from Steelway Light, usually. And if you are bringing buffers that buff love or charisma, the heal will be actually very good. But again, it depends on reaching overdrive in order to heal. We don't need that. We have AoE healers that can heal every two turns. Then the second one on turn begins, he would grant himself a heat up, increasing damage potential by 30%. That can stack three times before it ends, so 90% on turn three and beyond. And when he attacks with heat attacks, he will recover 2 BP. And the third one is Intrinsic Spear 4, reducing damage taken by 40% when resisting, 37% chance to evade resist attacks, and increases damage potential by 20%. So, we can reach 110% damage potential from passives, have at least one damage reduction, but relies on intrinsic, and he also gives this extra healing on overdrive, while also filling up OG gauge for a random ally. Then for skills, the first one is free, and it's a single target hit and pierce attack. It needs to have heat so that you get that extra 2 BP per turn. The second one is C Power AoE, can be used only two times per battle, and it's Heat and Pierce damage. That will also apply this Heat Up, increasing damage for the whole fight by 20%. 
So I said that he has 110%, right? He reaches 150%. Now, that's okay for a character that was not exactly made just for damage. But it will depend on the skill that he can actually use when being used on boss fights, right? And that skill is a single target double S attack with just heat damage. It's a spell. And it will apply guard down to an enemy, decreasing their defenses by 25%. Usually this translates into... Uh, 10 to 15 percent increase in damage depending on the character in your party because it relies on very complex formulas and it will also try to apply paralyze uh, with medium chance paralyze lasts for four turns but paralyze is something hard to use you rarely can use it and Wagner already has an AWE paralyze if you really want to paralyze the good thing is that if you got his musical style, there is a nuke attack that costs 12 VP and hits four times. That one will do much more damage than this one, even if you do not have the guard down effect. But if you are in a party like uh, Neon, Silver, it's better to just apply the guard down to increase the damage potential of your big nukers. But that's actually the design of this character. He will allow your party to heal more. He can increase the damage output by guard down. But he himself does not do that much damage even through he does have some good damage passives. I believe that it's a complicated design right now in the game with people that can already give lots of support like especially the latest fight on press is better than this guy. And we have access to very strong healings. We do not need that very small extra healing. So another easy to skip. I'm thinking about giving this better a uh, silver award because we still have a buffer that is very good here. She is unique by buffing both Endurance and Will on the same time every turn while also giving that extra very small healing. But it clashes with other characters. I think she's the only one that has a good future here. Although if you can take advantage of some of the other two, if you have Saruin, it means that Kazinsi will do more damage. So it's an okay banner to pull, but I cannot say that it's a must-have. If you get building, I believe you should drop off the banner, because we will have other characters that will be more relevant. And like I said, Razan can replace building with ease, and he is probably coming in the next month. But that is my opinion. What is yours? Please say here in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you still haven't. And I hope to see you soon in the next video or live stream. Bye.